hurt people hurt people and so what we have to really understand is that when we go through our own experiences of the more dark side of human behavior we have to understand that this stuff gets passed down generation 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 it is a ripple effect unless a special soul like you comes along and stops it and sees it for what it really is with compassion and i know it's a big ask but it's a process and it's it is completely possible and we are capable of healing all the pain in this world if each of us owns our inner work and starts to see human behavior with compassion and realize that we all are just doing the best we can based on what we've been given. And so usually someone that is traumatizing us has their own past of painful experiences that they took on as themselves and now they're projecting it and the cycle continues, right? Aloha, I'm Matt. And I'm Ash, and we are The Yoga Couple. We are internationally recognized holistic healers, authors of the inner work, and we're here to help you heal your inner child, face and transcend your shadows, and finally unlock a life of true freedom and lasting happiness. On this channel, we guide you on how to heal yourself through methods like chakra rebalancing, science of mind, transpersonal psychology, and yoga philosophy. Trust that you are divinely guided to this video. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. The answers are here now. First of all, we want to tell you how loved you are and that you are innately loved by source energy and the proof of that is because you even exist at all. You would not exist if you were not loved so. What happens in our lives is we sometimes lose the belief that we're loved or that we're worthy of love because we're rejected by people that we love. Sometimes we're rejected by people we're in relationships with, romantic relationships, and we feel unworthy of love because we're rejected, or sometimes even somebody that we think should love us no matter what, like our parent rejects us or abandons us, and this leads us to believe that we're unlovable. And any feelings of being unloved lead us to a frequency or a vibration or a theme of consciousness that we call shame. Shame is a direct result of being rejected and any traumas that have to do with being rejected. And it's the belief that we're unlovable or we're unworthy of love. And it is one of the egos or the mind or the shadows biggest cons and is the biggest lie because that is the farthest thing from the truth. Yes, it is definitely the farthest from the truth. And it, and it happens because we take on a sense of unworthiness and rejection from any form of trauma. And what we mean by that trauma is kind of like Ash was describing, it can be simple forms of embarrassment or any form of distress that doesn't get resolved. So um, it can be anything from just the way a parent looks at us or reprimands us all the way to obviously the really big things like molestation or being abused or um, you know being kidnapped or some crazy you know like really traumatic yeah. things it can be everything in between though yeah it's a that's spectrum. what we want to hit on is that we, when we usually think of trauma we usually think of like the big things like that like being kidnapped or being sexually molested and we're like well that didn't happen to me so maybe I don't have any trauma maybe I don't have any of this shame that they're talking about mm. um, and trauma doesn't need to be that extreme trauma is a spectrum so any time we have a feeling of rejection or there is unresolved mm. distress in our psyche we are going to experience trauma so for instance if our mother had a c-section like an emergency c-section where we were ripped from the womb and we didn't have the cognitive ability to understand why we were being ripped out of our safe womb as infants that's going to cause unresolved distress on the psyche and the reason for that is is because we don't have the ability to understand why that's happening to us and even if it was explained to us after it happened we were infants so we really just didn't understand all we felt is the unresolved panic and distress of um, getting ripped out of the womb 
Right, and and this is just like obviously something as a baby, but there's so many layers to this as children and even as adults where we can go through what we would call trauma, right? So this distress that makes us feel a sense of uh, rejection or that we are unworthy of love. And this is what I think that most people really relate to is feeling unworthy of love and feeling that for some reason there's something lacking in us and that there's something that is qualifying us to have these things happen to us. And that's really the, the biggest con that Ash was talking about earlier, the biggest lie of the ego of the mind is to convince us that like somehow we deserved these negative things to happen to us. And so the most important way to heal this shame, this, this sense of rejection and unworthiness is to really get clear about the fact that we are innocent, you are innocent. And that all of these experiences that we've had, these traumas that we've gone through, they weren't about you. They were just experiences that unfolded and happened. And then what our mind did with that is what is bringing the suffering. And the fact that you are always innocent means that you are innately always loved. And anything that has ever happened to you, whether it was growing up in an unstable home or having a father or a mother who left and abandoned you, or perhaps there was some sort of extreme trauma like sexual abuse as a child, whatever has happened to you is a not defining of your worth. Your identity, your worthiness, your lovability is not connected to any of the experiences or things that have happened to you. And the reason that we feel unlovable is because we think that things that happen to us are a part of who we are, are a part mm. of our identity, and they are not. They are just things that happened. And one of the ways that we can start to heal our self-worth and move out of the theme of consciousness of shame is to give those experiences back, in a sense, to the person who contributed to them or to the situation at hand and say, that's not me. It's not defining of me. That's just something that my physical being went through. That's just something that I endured mm. through or had to experience, but that's not defining of who I am. So I don't need to carry it on as a part of my identity. Right. It, and to use a really like mundane example, um, if we go through a day of like bad weather, we wouldn't be like, oh, that bad weather is like my fault. And that it's like, it has anything to do with me, like because there's a storm or something. But in the same way, when humans human interactions are negative, we make it all about us. But if you really look at it objectively, it's the same as like blaming nature for, you know, like that bad things are happening in nature because it's your fault. Yeah, and the other thing to think about is that if somebody did um, cause any sort of abuse or anything like that, that that is a reflection of the shame they are carrying. So anybody who abused you or abandoned you or made you feel unloved or violated you, that is theirs. That is a reflection of their consciousness. And you do not need to become a match or a mirror or take on their suffering as your own. Um, your abusers, pain and theme of shame does not need to become your theme of consciousness. Mm. Yeah, because hurt people hurt people or traumatize people traumatize people. And so what we have to really understand is that when we go through our own experiences of the more dark side of human behavior, we have to understand that this stuff gets passed down generation, generation, generation. It is a ripple effect unless a special soul like you comes along and stops it and sees it for what it really is with compassion. And I know it's a big ask, but it's a process and it's, it is completely possible and we are capable of healing all the pain in this world if each of us owns our inner work and starts to see human behavior with compassion and realize that we all are just doing the best we can based on what we've been given. And so usually someone that is traumatizing us has their own past of painful experiences that they took on as themselves and now they're projecting it and the cycle continues, right? And so the next step is obviously it might be way too big of an ask to be like, okay, go straight to compassion and forgiveness. So the next step is just like what Ash said, and it's to give it back in a sense. And the thing about giving it back is we're sometimes taught that we shouldn't blame, right? Like we feel really guilty. Like we're not allowed to blame other people for how we feel. And so we try to avoid that at all costs. But in so doing, we take on the blame ourselves, which causes the feelings of shame and unlovableness mm. and something that we really want to bring to 
your awareness is that there's a time and a place for every emotion and every theme of consciousness. And if you are somebody who's experiencing feeling unlovable or feeling rejected or taking on the blame yourself for the abuse that was done unto you, that it is actually healthy for you in this stage to give that back to its sender and say that's theirs. And eventually, like Matthew said, you do get to a place of forgiveness and compassion, but if you try to hold yourself Uh, accountable to forgiving and being compassionate and awakened in a sense when you're in the theme in shame you're going to feel defeated and maybe even feel suicidal because you're like that's impossible for me to feel or it might feel like a twisted joke or some like really messed up thing to say and we want you to know that you do not need to feel that way right now Mm -hmm. you you have permission this is us giving you full permission you do not need to be in a place of compassion forgiveness yet if you feel rejected and unlovable and have shame The only thing you need to do right now is shed that belief that that's yours and give it back to its sender. And if that is called blame in your head, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's actually healthy for you to start to climb out of it and work your way up the ladder of a more liberating theme of consciousness. Yeah, so in all the healing process, it's always a relative step to where we are. So the next step is to move into the next theme, which is um, formally called guilt and judgment, but more so in relativity to this, it's making sure and keeping the actions where they belong. So in this case, if it's someone causing trauma, that's their trauma being projected. Which is judgment, and it's okay for you to do for now. For now, and it's all relative. And then when we, uh, you'll see there'll be a video on guilt and judgment available as well, and you'll see that that will have a relative next step as well. And so as we move through the healing process, it is is a step-by-step guide to get us to that unconditional love and happiness that all humans seek, but what we haven't really had a guide yet is how to get there because it's like, yes, just be loving, be forgiving. You're like, poof, but how in the world am I going to do that? Yeah, so in other words, we have to start our healing from wherever we are. And inside the inner workbook, which we have here, you can order this, we'll put the link um, in the description, is there's a ladder of themes of consciousness. And what we just described to you was the first theme of shame and un- unworthiness. And and the inner work is about climbing through the emotions, about climbing through the themes of consciousness. And every single place that we're in has its own unique healing. Mm -hmm. So if you're somebody who's in shame, the healing is unique to somebody else who's in pride. They're completely different healing strategies. So um, this one is obviously for shame. And if you want to learn more about the journey, just keep following this series all the way through to learn all the themes of consciousness and all the different healings that you can do from wherever you are, from any situation you're in, there's always a way out in a next healing step. For now, remember you are innocent. We are always innately innocent. Even those who wronged us are innocent. We just don't know any better and we're all trying our absolute best. And begin to at least cultivate that for yourself and cultivate the the realization that you are innocent and that you're doing the best you can with what you've been given and what you know. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Leave us a comment if this resonated with you. If you have any questions, we are going to respond to the questions in the comments below. So please leave them there. And otherwise, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Namaste. Namaste.